So hi everyone, I'm Jack. I'm the CEO and founder of Hide My Ass. We are one of the fastest growing technology companies in the UK. Uh, we provide millions of users each month with tools to protect your online privacy, security, and tools to circumvent and bypass censorship. So I'm here today to talk about my story of how I've self-funded my company from complete scratch, from the comfort of my parents' sofa, and build it into the business that it is today. So we're approaching uh, 2 million subscriptions sold, uh, 100 staff and offices in three countries. And whilst I'll tell my story, I hope to share with you some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. And at the end of my speech, I'll summarize those lessons in a top 10 uh, list format. So how do I begin? I started at the age of 11 or 12 designing websites for my hobbies using drag and drop style design editors. So I didn't have any programming or design experience. And then over the course of the next year or so, I started uh, reading up on tutorials on ways to uh, design websites, graphic design, HTML, CSS, the very basics. And I think I really should stress, make use of the resources online. I've been completely self-taught. There's so many great resources online. Then at the age of uh, 13, I started my first proper web business and started writing tutorials of my own. So every time I learned something new, I'd just write a tutorial about it. I then started designing web templates, and these templates at that time were being published on the CD-ROM covers of popular UK computer magazines, so that great, gave me a sort of great motivation to keep on doing what I was doing. Um, a community evolved, and other like-minded designers, developers started coming on board, contributing uh, to the site. And I guess what I learned from my first major project was I just went out and did it for the experience, um, not so much for the money. Um, I also created a web hosting platform on my first project, giving people access um, to uploading their, their website for free on the internet. Um, and I realized you know, the need to make money online to cover those server costs. Um, so I started looking into affiliate marketing, and that's when I started thinking about the money. But prior to that, I was just doing it for the experience. I got into affiliate marketing, so promoting other paid web hosting companies. And every time one of my free users went on to uh, pay for a, a subscription with another company, I would get a cut of the commission. Um, then I started creating sites reactively based on certain media events, completely away from my first business. For example, when Zinedine Zidane headbutted that Italian football player in the World Cup, um, I created a site about it literally one hour uh, after the headbutt, and it went viral, and I made some money from advertising. And I did this again and again based on uh, certain media events, getting websites out there really fast, uh, gaining the organic search engine rankings, and trying to go viral. So hide my ass. I um, started hide my ass in 2005, probably driven through teenage angst. I really hated censorship. So I was at school, and you know I can access my favorite websites. Um, and I'm sure you've all been at work or at school too and been in the same position or been in a country with government censorship where even from your home you can't access social media and popular websites. So I started looking at uh, the current market and what was out there to circumvent, circumvent this. There are a few sites existing already based on web proxy technology. A web proxy is a simple browser-based tool where you enter the web address you wish to unblock and it unblocks it for you. Um, I realized these sites were very cluttered with advertisements. The user experience wasn't too great. So I decided to be brave and call it Hide My Ass. And in one afternoon, literally one afternoon, I created a website with a logo and a text box, some open source technology behind that, and launched Hide My Ass. I submitted it to Dig, which at that time was the Reddit of the internet, and the site just went viral. Um, and within the first week, thousands of websites were relying sorry, we're linking to hide my ass, and I had no paid marketing at all. So that was kind of my marketing strategy, to try and go viral word of mouth. Um, so what I've learned from this really is obviously understand your audience. Try not to create a, a product based on a problem that doesn't really exist. Obviously, online censorship affects the millions of people worldwide. Um, so there's definitely a need for it. And I saw the traffic rankings of these competing services and realized they were generating a lot of traffic, but the services weren't great. Create strong branding, be brave, hide my ass. I wanted to stand out from the crowd. And it went viral mainly because of that. So really try and stand out. Um, and then make use of uh, viral marketing. Or it's not always going to work, but try to make use of free marketing channels before you even consider uh, paid marketing. So the site um, was making money on advertising for a few years, um, on and off, almost on autopilot. I improved the service a little bit over that time. but. 
it wasn't um, sort of a full-time role. And then in 2008, the recession hit, and the advertising rates plummeted, and I was making probably a third of the money that the site used to make. So I had millions of users at that time, and I realized there must be a better way to monetize um, the site. So I looked at uh, other ways to sell a subscription-based service, so a premium-based service. At that time, there were one or two competitors basing their technology on uh, VPN rather than web proxy, which has superior benefits. I looked at these services. They're all very techy. They weren't accessible for everyone. So I saw a gap in the market to create an easy-to-use software solution to connect people to these, these worldwide servers, this VPN technology, so that the average Joe, not the tech-savvy kind of person, could just use a service to bypass censorship and, and to protect their online privacy. Um, the other gap in the market was creating a global infrastructure. So servers all over the world, so you can um, get the fastest speeds possible, um, the greatest privacy, um, and network coverage. Um, at that time, the services out there were only offering locations in one or two countries. Um, and then I outsourced the development uh, using a site called Odesk. You can hire freelancers um, per hour or on a per project basis. That meant I didn't need to set up an office or um, get someone local to come in and work for me. Um, so it's a very fast and efficient way of just getting people to work for you. Then about a year on and off of development, um, this was in 2008, we were in a, year, in a, in a position to, to launch uh, the product. But it wasn't perfect, it was riddled with bugs, and I kept trying to perfect it. But what I realized I needed to do is just launch it, because if I launched it, it was still far superior than anything else out on the market. So despite being a bit buggy, I just launched it, and it was an instant success. I remember in the first month it making something like $25,000, and at that time I was expecting to make that kind of money in the, in the 12th month. So it really, really surprised me, um, and I'm, I'm grateful to just submit the product into the market as fast as possible, even if it wasn't perfect. Then I kept expanding the team remotely um, through freelance sites. I had about people working with me in, in eight different countries, and there started to become some trust issues. By that time, the company was worth in the millions of pounds, and I didn't feel comfortable hiring people who you know, I've never met. So prior to this, I'd never met any of my staff or even Skyped them. Um, so I, I realized the need to set up a proper office um, and get people working for me in-house. So I, in 2012, I set up a London office. Um, the lawyer of my company at that time liked the company so much that he came on board and joined me and joined the company as COO. Um, and then later that year, we launched an office in Serbia. One of my first potential customers was from Serbia, and he helped fix a bug, bug issue with the software. So I said, well, why don't you come on board, help out with customer support? So we had presence in Serbia, and it just made logical sense to create an office in Serbia. And then later, an office in um, Kiev, the lead techie guy of my company who I found freelancing was based in Kiev, so I set up an office in Kiev um, for development. So where are we now? Um, nine years later, um, we've sold about two million subscriptions. We've got nearly 100 staff working for us, um, and we're launching new brands and products like Hide My Phone, Privacy for Your Phone. But I guess the greatest achievement for me has been uh, enabling people, millions of people across the world, bypass government censorship especially during the Arab Spring, where um, we helped a lot of people access social media, which was blocked um, by the governments. So that's sort of the main reason why I started that site, and I'm really happy that it's still to, the, to this day being used uh, for these reasons. Um, so just to summarize what I've learned, um, really exploit your age. I started really, really young. Um, I had no dependencies. I didn't really have anything to lose. I had no mortgage to pay. And I think it's really important just to go out there and do things for the experience, um, not to try and make money at first, but create a product, design an app, um, create a website, just do something to find out what you're naturally good at. Some people are naturally good programmers, some people are naturally good designers. Just go out there and try and make something. Um, understand your audience. Obviously, don't try and make something that people don't want or need. It sounds obvious, but so many people make this mistake. Um, branding is everything. I think I wouldn't have gone viral if it wasn't called Hi My Ass. So perhaps the branding is the reason why I'm on the stage today. Um, get it out there. 
Focus on your minimal viable product. It doesn't need to be perfect. You can always try to perfect it later on. And you'll probably find out that you can't perfect it completely anyway. Um, make use of free marketing channels before you even consider paid marketing. You don't need a massive launch budget for your first web business. Um, try to engage your, with your users as much as possible. Creating a community is a great way to interact with your users. Um, and I've had many key employees from my community who have worked for me for you know, uh, eight years, and they're now in my London office. Um, tr try not to delegate too early. Um, it's a great, great way to dive into all areas of your business first, and then later delegate, so you have a, a great understanding of how your machine actually works in all of the different departments. I think it's really important to stress that. You can outsource your staff, so you don't need an office, um, and you don't need to find someone locally. You can get a project made really cheaply, remotely, on a per hour basis if you need someone to program for you. And I think lastly is a really good point. You don't need to focus on financing um, at such an early stage. Don't spend half of your time uh, creating presentations for investors. Spend all of your time creating your actual product first instead of giving away something, you know, 60, 70 percent of your business before it's even been launched. So those uh, are my top 10 tips. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Sure. You're talking there about talking to investors, mm -hmm. and presumably you did that at a very young age as well. Do you have any tips for um, investors? No, I mean I didn't didn't need investment because I already started, just did it all myself. And I think my key point is, don't try to worry about investment unless you obviously need it. If you're creating something big or something physical, perhaps you need money to actually make it. But virtually, if you learn programming or design, you can just do it all yourself from a young age. And, and you don't need investors. What about further down the line, having business meetings? Was your age ever particularly helpful or a hindrance? I think, I think my first business meeting was like five years after the, the launch of the yeah. site. So I was just <laughs> in my parent. I was working for my parents' home. So and you didn't even know your employees. No. No. <laughs> I, I imagine you'd do that differently. No. <laughs> um, no. I, I, was, I guess I got a bit lucky. I got a lot of trustful yeah. people on board. And can you tell us what countries is most popular in today? Um, for our paid service, uh, North America's uh, huge, Europe's huge, but for our free um, proxy service, you know, just to circumvent censorship, it's really big in the Middle East, um, where obviously there's heavy government censorship. Okay, thank you so okay. much, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>